This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stick around to the end of the video to hear ways to expand your mind and creativity. So over the years, I've heard a lot of people complain about the 2016 Jungle Book. And a lot of those complaints are... warranted. But one giant question so many people have is, why was King Louie so huge? Especially considering that in the animated film, he was only a little bit bigger than Mowgli. And here he towers over him like a hulking beast! So why? Well, let's go look at orangutans. The original animated King Louie was probably a little small for an orangutan. The tallest orangutans that we know of today are roughly around 5 feet tall. So, yeah, the animated one might have been a little small, but that still doesn't explain Gigantor over here! Even at 5 feet tall, Mowgli should be only about a foot smaller or so, depending on his age, but not almost the height of the elephants from earlier in the film, so why is he so big? Well, the answer may surprise you. Because to start, he's not even an orangutan. <gasps> now hear me out before you start screaming that your childhood was ruined in the 1967 version. Yes, he is absolutely an orangutan, but the one in 2016 is not. King Louis actually kind of has an interesting history. He was not in the original Jungle Book. And by that, I mean the book. Like the actual book of the Jungle Book that Rudyard Kipling wrote and Walt Disney's animated film is loosely based on. Yeah, there's no King Louis in that. So he was a creation from the animated film in 1967. The only thing is, they obviously didn't do a whole lot of research when creating King Louis's character because... Yeah, the jungles of India where this takes place, there are no orangutans. Yeah, orangutans only live on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. So, unless you see them in a zoo or they got really good at swimming and nobody knew, you won't see any orangutans in the jungles of India. And this proved to be a bit of a problem for Jon Favreau and his team making the 2016 Jungle Book. Now, as stated in the short documentary, The Jungle Book Reimagined, it said that Jon Favreau and his team really didn't want to put any animals in the film that were not native to India. So, what are you going to do about him? He's kind of one of your primary characters if you're doing a Disney remake. Um, so how are you going to keep him in the movie? Well, his team did a little digging. Looking through all of the animals, not only that live today, but used to live there, they found one ape that could solve all of their problems. And that ape was Gigantopithecus. Now, Gigantopithecus did live in India. I mean, it was thousands of years ago, but it did live there. And it was actually closely related to orangutans. And a lot of experts think that because of that reason, Gigantopithecus probably was very similar to an orangutan, at least in appearance. And one more detail I forgot to mention. <laughs> this thing was huge! This thing is the largest ape that has ever been found at this moment in time. It's been estimated that when standing on its hind legs, a Gigantopithecus could be close to 10 feet tall. I mean, this thing could look some elephants in the eye. This thing was huge. So how can an audience expect to believe that a creature that lived thousands of years ago, by some records, maybe even 100,000 years, could, could still be around in the jungle like this? Well, it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. There have been many times, even in our own recent history, that we thought an animal was extinct only to be proven wrong and to find them still alive in nature. According to National Geographic, there's been roughly 350 species that have been rediscovered over the course of human history. For example, the Fernandina giant tortoise was thought to have gone extinct all the way back in 1906, but was rediscovered on the Galapagos Islands in 2019. Or we can go back a little ways more. The Bermuda petrel was thought to be extinct for 330 years until they were rediscovered in 1951. And this last one, oh, this last one takes the cake. The coelacanth. The coelacanth was thought to have gone extinct 66 million years ago. I mean, this thing was swimming around with the dinosaurs. And yet, it showed up in a South African fish market in 1938. This thing's still alive! So, is it plausible, at least for a fictional Disney film, that there could be one Gigantopithecus left, living in the ruins of an abandoned temple, being king over the monkeys and it's just never been discovered? Actually, yeah! I could totally get on board with that. 
But what I can't get on board about is seeing a Gigantopithecus sing. That, that part doesn't really add up. Speaking of which, let's talk about the song he sings. One of the songwriters from the original animated film, Richard Sherman, was brought on to help with the songs of this film. According to the short documentary that I mentioned earlier, it was stated that whenever he came in to talk to John Favreau about the songs, they got to I Want to Be Like You, and John Favreau was like, oh, you know, we changed him into a Gigantopithecus, and Richard Sherman was like, wait, say that again? And he was like, Gigantopithecus, say it again, Gigantopithecus. So he grabbed his, <laughs> Richard Sherman like grabbed his, his pen and paper and just went to town. And he started writing new lyrics because he was so inspired by that crazy word of Gigantopithecus. I would sing it for you right now, but because of copyright reasons, I'm not going to do that. So I'll just show you the lyrics. Now you might think it's ridiculous that me, a Gigantopithecus, would ever dream I'd like to team with the likes of you, man cub. And also, oh how magnificent it would be, a Gigantopithecus like me could learn to do like you humans do ooh ooh. Now you know, and you can go and impress your friends. Now, if you've watched the video this far, I can tell you're a person who likes to expand your mind to learn more things. Then in that case, you really need to hear about Skillshare. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With Skillshare, you can discover new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in a world of creativity. Skillshare offers classes on a huge array of topics, from illustration to web development, to marketing to animation, and so much more. And you're not learning from Amazon amateurs here. No, no, no. There's tons of classes taught by people who are working in the fields or qualified teachers, such as Daniel Scott, who is a certified Photoshop trainer. I've been checking out his course on Photoshop, Essentials Training Course, and learning a ton from him. Skillshare is designed with learning in mind and creates the best environment to do so, meaning that there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes to keep your creativity flowing and your mind sharp. There's endless learning to be had, and it's all for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So why not give it a try and find a new skill today? Go to the link in the description to join, and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link will get a free trial of premium membership. So there's no reason not to try. So have fun and happy learning. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.